and welcome to The Essentials with Harriet Jones and Sam Andrews. Thanks for joining us this Wednesday. We're live across Leeds with what you need to know. This week's top stories. Straining A&E resources, we hear from staff at Leeds General Infirmary about students' minor illnesses that are causing major problems. Also, dragged along the streets of Leeds in a drive-by robbery, Sadie Fox shares a shocking story. Super gonorrhea. Everyone's talking about it, but what actually is it? And what are the symptoms? We have everything you need to know. Calls to take action on bin yards. Leeds City Council urges landlords and tenants to work with local authorities in a new plea to help tackle Leeds' litter problems. And in this week's essential question, we're asking, will you give a thumbs up to Facebook's new set of emojis? And also, we're joined by the Griffin to take a look back at this week's big talking points. Plus, Dan McCarthy will have the latest weather. That's all in around 10 minutes. We begin, we begin with the programme with the new information given to The Essential about strain students are placing on accident and emergency waiting times. Staff from Lee's General Infirmary have told us that people arriving at A&E with minor problems such as the common cold are causing increasing waiting times for those who acquire most urgent attention. After being granted special access, our health correspondent Lucy Reid has this report. So it comes as no surprise that A&E is always a particularly busy place to be, but especially at the start of this academic year. The number of young people, especially students, who are visiting the Accident and Emergency Department has increased by up to 44% this year alone. We're here at the Leeds General Infirmary today to find out a little bit more about the pressures and the strains it's putting on the NHS. Well, we're seeing a lot of students at the moment. Uh, we've got all the first years and then everyone's returned for all of their the new terms. Freshers Week was particularly busy. I did the first two nights and the department was rammed. And that time, most of the people that were coming in were coming in as a result of alcohol-related injuries to prevent loss or alcohol as their only problem. I mean, if you're drunk and you fall over and you break your wrist, that's exactly what we're here for. And we can complain about the fact that you were drunk and did it, but you've broken your wrist, we need to see it. If you're just drunk and your friends have left you, and the ambulance is called because you're lying in the street, then that absolutely, that could be taken home by your friends. And then from a daytime perspective, a lot of the students we're seeing are students who could quite easily either go to a pharmacist, as today I've seen a young um, patient with allergies that aren't particularly severe, and the pharmacist would have quite happily advised the right medication, or go to their GP or make sure they know they're registered with the student practice as part of the university and not come here for repeat prescriptions, which is what we're getting a lot of today as well. I think there should be an awareness of people that can take responsibility for their own health needs um, and not necessarily passing it on to professionals straight away. So for instance a cough and cold doesn't necessarily mean to come to A&E. You might feel unwell but go to your pharmacy, get advice from them, take regular paracetamol, ibuprofen. Um, if your symptoms persist and they're severe, we never turn anybody away and we never would turn anybody away. Um, but just try and resolve those problems somewhere else first. So it's clear that the NHS is under considerable strain and this pressure is not being helped by the number of students visiting with what can only be described as minor injuries. Lucy Reid, The Essential. Lucy Reid reporting there from LGI. Next, it's everyone's worst nightmare, but from what, for one of our students, it's become a reality. Last week, a University of Leeds fresher was targeted in a drive-by robbery. Our correspondent, Tom Danbach, has a story. This is Sadie Fox, a first-year student at the University of Leeds. Like any other student, she was walking home from uni after a day of lectures. But as she was nearing the end of her walk home, it took a turn for the worse, as she became the victim of a drive-by robbery. I felt a car come behind me, and I thought it was just going to, you know, pull in or just turn. And um, it came up really close to me. The next thing I knew, it was, I felt a pull on my bag. And I turned to him and I saw this guy and I was just, it's kind of like a backwards and throwing of the bag. It was, it was like about five seconds while I was trying to get the bag back and I was screaming or whatever. And um, yeah, the next thing I knew, he put his foot down and was going in the middle of the road. Sadie's arm became caught in her bag strap and was then dragged along the road by the car. It was at these crossroads she realised she was in the path of a parked car. I was thinking if he didn't stop, I was going to slam straight into it. I, I don't know what the... I thought it was going to be paralysed. I don't, honestly didn't know what to think. I thought I was just going to slam straight into it. And then obviously at the, last, at the very last minute, I was screaming at him to stop and whatever. And at the very last minute, he swerved. And that's when he stopped and my hand became free. I think the most blurry part is when he first, came, you know, first 
pulled the bag because I do remember being dragged down the street quite vividly. Luckily, Sadie had managed to avoid serious injury. However, the police are still searching for the driver of the car. Now, what they have confirmed is that the vehicle involved in the attack was a black Renault Clio stolen from Beeston earlier that day. West Yorkshire Police say they have some strong leads, but want anyone with any information to contact the neighbourhood crime team or call Crime Stoppers anonymously. So at the moment we're trying to identify the suspects. So we're uh, looking at the motor vehicle that was used and the suspect description that's been given both by uh, Sadie and some witnesses. And so we've got some good leads out there. At this point in time we can't comment any further. As I said, it's a one-off incident, so I don't want people changing their habits of a lifetime just because of uh, a couple of idiots in a car who've uh, gone out and Sadie's been unfortunate enough to meet on that night. Um, However, if you're walking on the street, why not step a little bit further away from the road, carry your bag on the shoulder that's not uh, facing towards the road. Little things like that can make a big difference and it's that constant vigilance, isn't it, to be aware of. Sadie says she's been overwhelmed by the support offered to her since the attack. There's not many flatmates that would like, come and help me the way I have after like knowing me for like three weeks. I'm honestly so grateful. My family, you know, they've been so caring, so supportive and like, they obviously didn't want me to come back, but no, the support's been amazing. Despite the horror of the attack, Sadie remains positive and wants to continue to enjoy the next three years of her university life in Leeds. Tom Dambach, The Essential. And if you want to watch that interview again, search LSTV on YouTube. Now we all know that people can become resistant to antibiotics. However, have you ever considered if this could affect your sexual health? Well, the overuse and misuse of this medication has caused a new super strain of STIs. Our student affairs correspondent Jess Todd has this report. Sexual health amongst the student community is often a highly talked about subject, but this month found a new strain of the sexually transmitted infection gonorrhea. Aptly named super gonorrhea, this new form of the virus is proving more resistant against effective treatments. But what exactly is super gonorrhea? Um, so what has been termed recently uh, super gonorrhea is uh, gonorrhea as anyone would know it apart from the fact that it happens to be resistant uh, to one of our two first line antibiotics um, and the concern with that is obviously that our treatment options um, start to become reduced um, and gonorrhea um, is something that uh, can cause quite a lot of uh, morbidity if it's not diagnosed early on and treated effectively. The issue is, like with many sexually transmitted infections, supergonorrhea is asymptomatic. In other words, it could go completely unnoticed. However, some people could experience symptoms such as discomfort when passing urine, or for men, urethral discharge, and women, change in vaginal discharge. The main message, however, is prevention is the best cure, and therefore to protect yourself by using condoms until you're in a long-term monogamous relationship. One way in which you can get tested is at the Leeds Sexual Health Drop-In Centres, where tests, results and treatment can be given out on the spot. An alternative to this is a postal sample that tests for both chlamydia and gonorrhea. Test.me is a simple urine sample that is delivered anonymously to your house and then posted back for free. And then your results are texted to you within three to five working days. However, it should be noted that these postal tests are not as accurate as clinical testing and therefore if you're experiencing any symptoms of sexually transmitted infections, then you should go along to the Leeds Sexual Health Clinic. While it has been suggested that supergonorrhea is an incurable strain of the gonorrhea virus, Leeds Sexual Health Clinic has found results that prove otherwise. So actually so far the treatment for this particular strain is we have treated it um, in the same way as we have treated we would treat any other strain of gonorrhea so we have given our two first line antibiotics uh, this strain is only resistant to one of those antibiotics so the other antibiotic has done its job and in those individuals who we've recalled to check that that treatment has been effective in all those individuals who've come back to see us that treatment has been effective but for now, the main advice is to get yourself tested to prevent further spread of the STI around the community of Leeds. Still to come on The Essential, clamping down on Leeds' bin yards. Find out what the council are doing to tackle our litter problems. Plus, will you be liking Facebook's latest idea? We go around LUU to find out. All that's ahead. Time for a quick break now. We'll see you on the other side. Leeds City Council is calling on residents, landlords and tenants to work with the authority and to clear up bin yards. With local residents and businesses in some areas becoming increasingly concerned about the impact of our community and reputation, 
The council is hoping to work with people so they can tackle problematic bin yards themselves. With a mixed response from numerous parties involved, environmental action officers say that they have done their utmost to make sure that they understand their responsibilities. Our Hyde Park correspondent Olivia Marks reports. This is a common sight in Leeds student areas, bins overflowing with rubbish, often spilling into the street, but the council are urging for a shift in focus. But as the majority of these are privately owned, the council are urging residents and owners to work alongside the authority to stop these from becoming a dumping ground. Councillor Mark Dobson said in a statement to us, Our resources aren't infinite and we can't continually clear up after others, especially when they have a role to play. Equally, we can't stand by and allow fly tipping, but we need people to come forward with information so we can catch the perpetrators. Do you think bin yards are a problem in Leeds? Um, I mean, like, not the biggest problem in Leeds, but I mean, I guess it could be classed as a problem, especially in the more run-down areas. They kind of just get used, especially when people, I mean, kids a lot of the time steal bins and burn them, and then you, you don't get your wheelie bin replaced for a while, and then people just throw the bags into the bin yards, and they don't get cleaned up for a while, and then you end up with rats and things like that. Yes, because there's rubbish all up and down the streets in Hyde Park, and it's not, it makes it a, like, worst place to live in. Uh... <laughs> think it's all right the way it is now so <laughs> yeah, yeah well I've never really thought about it to be honest so I don't know what I don't like is when they're all everybody leaves them out on the roads all the time um I have a bit of a thing about that I noticed them in Headingley the other day they just leave them out all week on the road so that's a bit of an issue this next story has got social media going crazy and it's no surprise the users of Facebook have been calling upon new emotions for some time, but now Facebook's CEO Mark Zuckerberg has revealed that the way we interact with each other's posts could be changing. That's right, it's been announced that new reactions will allow us to express emotions like love, laughter, shock, sadness and even anger. Our reporter Zach Walker was tasked with finding out what students of LU have to say. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Zach Walker with the essential question. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook head, recently announced that he's planning on introducing emotions into Facebook statuses. Things like anger, love, hate will all be available recently. We're asking students what their opinion is and whether we need these extra emotions or is like just enough. Um, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, yes, sometimes you want to like <laughs> express other things, but I don't know, like because it's emojis, isn't it? It's not quite like having a dislike button. So I'm not sure if people who don't already use them will just carry on commenting anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've already seen all the emoticons, and to be honest, people just wanted a dislike button. I think that the emojis are a bit weird, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so do you reckon that you'll use the new ones when they're introduced? Uh, and if so, why might you do that? Um, knowing me, I'll probably use them, like, ironically or sarcastically, and then eventually they'll fall into my everyday use. Yeah. Um, if I use it, I'd probably use it as a joke, because I think otherwise it can just be a bit too offensive to sort of officially say to on a public forum that you don't like something yeah. that someone said or whatever, so... Uh, so do you think they'll kind of create a negative attitude around it? Yeah, I think it, that could probably happen. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm a green hand for Facebook, because yeah. I come from China, I didn't use it there ever before. I think it's really... Uh, interesting, uh, like an uh, <laughs> online community, you can uh, uh, make friends with each other and uh, uh, follow what you like. Yeah, I think it's awful. I think liking something is nice because if you don't like it, then you don't have to. Yeah, disliking something yeah. I think is kind of rude. If you have the option to dislike and people will dislike it, I don't know, I just don't think it's very good. It won't change Facebook because we use it for different means, don't we? And people aren't really going to care. Well, if you do care, you're a bit childish. If you do care what other people think about you. But I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. But personally, I think it's the wrong move. Yeah. Time now to turn to the papers and to take a look at this week's biggest student talking points. Joining us today from the Griffin is Rachel and Beth. What have you guys got coming up like this week's edition of the Griffin? Um, well, in the magazine section of the Griffin this week, we've got um, a couple of pieces. Um, it's Black History Month edition. Right, yeah. So we've got some really interesting pieces on Black Ballet, which is one of my favourite pieces for this week. We've got something on the underrepresentation of black people in video games and some other stuff as well that I can't quite remember. Not gonna Very lie. interesting. Well, we can all have a look at that. Uh, one of the things that I was reading on in the Griffin this week was the article on Bigger X, yeah. That was pretty interesting. So, can you tell us a bit more about that? and how and who it affects. 
Um, I think it's a massive issue, um, and it doesn't get as much coverage as other eating or body image disorders might. So it's great that it's been brought to light, and it's a really big article, and it's so detailed. And and how, what's the best? Important. Like, how is it? Is it very? Is it something that affects a lot of people in the UK? And how is it? How can we? I think so. Particularly it? at the moment, particularly with men as well. Yeah. The fact that you, I mean, we all have friends who go to the gym like all the time and just really concentrate on getting like big arms and everything, and really just concentrating on doing that like every single day for as many hours as they can. And I think it is something that is. I don't think many people realise can be a, a disorder as much as other things yeah. as well because there is such a focus on it at the moment. Or yeah. Or body yeah. image as much as you know other aspects of it, and it is like it's a big deal. I mean, I mean the picture that we used was one of the rock. I mean, his biceps were just oh, they were a little bit scary. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I know it's too much for me. It doesn't way, know. way too much. Don't understand too much it. Me. It was terrifying. And on the subject of like sport and fitness, varsity, of course, that was a big event last week, so it was a big part of the paper. And one of the issues that you guys addressed was whether there's too much focus on. The May, the, or the men's rugby union final. Mm. What's your opinion yeah, on that? Yeah, this was my section. Um, I don't know if I have an answer, but I'm glad we did the question. Yeah. Because obviously there are so many sports teams in the university yeah. playing at a high level and with as many people, and it's just an interesting to question whether it's fair and whether it's right. Yeah. And I mean, the men's rugby union team are brilliant, and it's always a good match. It's always yeah. it's always yeah. a good environment going down there. But maybe some of the spotlight does need to be shared, and maybe that's something that the. Do you union think if it if it on. was changed that um, it would get the same revenue and support as the union did? I think in women's sport at the moment, the question of whether things should be professionalised is really important. With the women's first fifteen, I think it's the first fifteen are now official professional jobs, so they have yeah. a salary. They yeah. don't have to work another job and play rugby. Women's cycling is coming on in leaps and bounds, I love and watching women's they cycling. found that if the money's there to fund them, they get the money from people watching. It's the same yeah. with the women's boat race until. A uh, woman who was going to be doing the marketing turned around and said, I will not do this yeah. unless you put the women's boat racing. No one would do it. But yeah. Yeah. they got as many more viewers this year than they've ever had. They yeah. got more funding from it. It just shows that the market is there. Also, uh, front page news the Amber Taxi story. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell us about that? Um, well, as I think you can agree, looking at this, we did a brilliant job of crossing out on the front cover. Yes. yes. As you're able to tell. Very but, um, important. Yeah, the um, thing was we um, spoke to the woman who had been assaulted and we spoke to her and got her side of the story. And then we wrote a news article that was very fair to Amber Taxes. I mean, we think we've yeah. they've dealt with the situation absolutely brilliantly because obviously the woman got assaulted and they've suspended the driver Good. and now pending Good. an investigation. So they're taking appropriate action for yeah, it. Yeah, they're taking appropriate action for it. And I mean, the... I think it's important as well because obviously they've got a contract with the uni. Mm -hmm. So it's important that it's very, mm -hmm. they yeah. need our trust so that students... Okay, they're them. brilliant. I mean, uh, how many of us around Leeds have used them throughout the entirety yeah, of they're our the time at university? I mean, they've yeah. been absolutely fantastic to me every single time yeah, I've used them. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. App, so it's just like a one-off thing that has happened and, yeah. I think, we did, I think we did a brilliant story and I think it was incredibly fair, incredibly well balanced. I mean, a bit biased, admittedly, but... Yes, but you know, <laughs> what the is, Griffin. No, it's really a really interesting article. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about trust, really. I mean, how much do you think it might affect the trust of <coughs> people now going to Amber Taxis? Do you think it would have hurt them at all? I don't think so. I think it's very much a one-off situation, like with anything that does happen like that. It's yeah. the kind of, it's one individual who lets down the company. Yeah, and I mean, they've been absolutely fantastic for... Like nine long times long out of ten. Nine times out of ten, even more than that, like 99.999% times. And I mean, I don't think anybody I've spoken to has been bothered by it at all. They're just like, that's such a shame, poor girl. More than yeah. anything else, I don't think they yeah. annoyed at the company in the slightest. Well, there's been a lot of like, attention around it. You know, I've read in the article there was 10,000 shares on Facebook, so there's mm. a big awareness about oh, it. Yeah, definitely a big awareness about it. If you read the comments on those um, shares, a lot of people have been saying, I had an issue with Amber ta Taxi Driver. Yeah. Um, they, I spoke to Amber about it, and they were absolutely fantastic about it. So there's a lot of support for the company out there, yeah. definitely still. And it's all about being sensible as well, oh, and completely. making sure that you know you have the right cash, and might make you think whether mm. the app's the right way to go. Yeah, but that's a different that's thing. completely that you want to use. Or, yeah, but it's, it's for what makes you feel comfortable. I think that's the most important yeah. thing. Whatever you think that you're safe with, then you go with your gut instinct. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. thanks for joining us. Thank that was much. very kind of you guys to come in and share your newspaper. Okay, well, it's nearly, um, it's almost the end of this week's programme, but before we go, let's take a quick glance at this week's weather. Here's Dan McCarthy. Hello there. Well, today and tomorrow will be mostly dry with some sunshine. It's going to turn rather cloudy on Friday with temperatures unfortunately dropping and there being a chance of frost and fog in some areas. That's it for your weather update. Have a great week. Thanks, Dan. And don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at LSTV Essential or drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you at news at lstv.co.uk. That's all from us. In the meantime, head over to our YouTube channel for all the latest news and views from in and around LUU. We'll see you next time. LSTV Live returns after the quick break.